Hello, and welcome to Robert Mascioli's guide into the internals of quartz clock mechanisms. Now, for this guide, I'm going to slowly guide you through a quartz clock mechanism. I'm going to show you what's inside it, how all the pieces fit together, with the eventual goal of you maybe being able to take it apart yourself and see what's going on. So, here you see a standard quartz clock. I bought it from a local Kmart and it only cost me $3. So I would suggest if you want to follow along, you too should buy a cheap clock from a store near you and use it for the sake of testing. Now, to save you the trouble of watching me disassemble it all, I disassembled another one earlier, and this is the mechanism that is inside. If you look at the back of this clock, you'll often find the mechanism right here. So, let's pretend that I did in fact do all that extraction process in front of you and now we are left with this. This is a clock mechanism. Usually these hands, clock hands, are sitting on there and you they spin as this dial spins. I'm sure you can see how that all fits together. You stick a battery in the back here and you spin this thing to change the dials at the front and spin the hands into the correct position. Now, we want to look inside this, so we're going to open up these little clips here and here and take a closer look. So, uh, be careful with this. Just pop something in there, like a screwdriver or some other part you might have lying around. Give it a bit of a crack open. Try and be careful, I'm going to be as careful as possible, but there's like a 50-50 chance that all the parts will just fall out anyway. So, there we go. Lifting it up gently. Ah. Careful, careful, careful. And here we go. Here are the internals of a quartz clock. Now, as you can see, some of the pieces got left behind over here instead of over here. So, I'm going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer some of it. So I'm going to pick up this. I'm going to transfer it over here just so that it makes a little bit more sense for you when you take a look at it. Oh, right, right. Sorry about the minor delay. Sticking this in carefully. There we go. This guy goes here. This guy goes here. And this, in fact, goes here. Sorry. One second. There we go, thank you for waiting. So I don't know if you can see this very clearly yet, but that is the inside of a quartz clock. You see the two components right there. Now, hopefully, one of the first things that jumps out at you is this. This uh, chromey, um, browny, metallic material is a solenoid, and this here is a device it spins. Now, I'm going to show you fundamentally how it works. You know this is a clock piece. You know that every second, this clock has to make one tick of the second's hand. So it's got to tick every second. I'm going to show you that tick happening. Now, to do that properly, I'm going to pop this gear off again, put it down there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a battery, just a standard battery, and I'll pop it in place right here. Okay, push it down a bit to make sure the connections happen. Oh, sorry. Everything's not quite in place yet. Underneath has, in fact, come loose. Sorry, it seems like I've got to take this off again. Sorry, just that one piece fell out of line. It 
two pieces fill out a line. There we go. Get in there slowly but surely. You're getting a good view of the seconds, of the hours and minutes hands at the moment. And I'm just going to jam everything back in place. Like so. Okay. You should see the first thing happening now. Can you hear that? Can you see that? The clock is spinning and moving. Cool, you should notice that that piece is going. So this piece is the first gear in the system. It's rotating right now. And if I pull it out to see what it is, look at that, it's nothing special. There's just a little hole here where it spins freely on top and you've got this device here now what is it? <laughs> it's nothing less than a magnet and I can prove that by getting this here and proving that it is in fact a magnet see? sticking, defying gravity magnet <laughs> and this magnet is being affected by this solenoid such that when I put it in and make sure it gets connection it spins but you're kind of probably wondering how's it spinning at the moment so to make your life easier I'm gonna mark this little gear with a texture so that way you can see what's going on there we go cool can you see that little black mark on it? excellent Let's make it spin now. Hmm. How interesting. It's spinning pretty much exactly 180 degrees. Now, we've got a bit of a challenge here. Is it spinning 180 degrees by going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back? Or is it spinning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so in circles. So the question is, is it going back or forth, or is it spinning in circles? And you probably can't tell it from this, but if I put another component in, it'll make it quite obvious what's going on. So let me go here and put this gear back in place now. So, pop this in place. There you go. Now, watch that little dot you see right there as this goes to start spinning. Are you seeing it? How that little dot is rotating around? Now you know that if this gear was spinning back and forth, so too should this gear be spinning back and forth. But instead, this gear continues spinning around in a circle, so you know that this too must be spinning around in a circle, round and round and round. So that's good. That's kind of what we would expect, right? You don't see any special gears here to compensate for reverse motion so it would make sense that since the second hand on the clock always keeps spinning in the same direction that so too should these gears also always spin in the same direction and as you can see this gear is translating this gear that's translating to this guy and this is the seconds hand now since this is spinning one half for every second tick and every two seconds it does one full revolution, we can expect that 60 half ticks equals one complete revolution of this, or 30 revolutions of this is one full revolution of the second hand. Easy peasy. So you're probably wondering, now that we've got this seconds hand spinning, how does the seconds hand spin the minutes hand? And that's what this gear helps do. So if we put this guy in place, and shove him in there and apply pressure again to the circuit we can see that the seconds hand slowly spins this tran this one now I'm gonna disconnect this and take this off but before I go you might be wondering what is it about this circuit that makes this gear always spin in the same direction and it's simple watch this this is about the center of the solenoid. 
Let me try and get you a better angle there so you can see it. But there we go. You would probably agree that this is lined up centrally with my solenoid, and this here is the center of my gear. So the magnet isn't put directly in line with the solenoid, it's put slightly off center. So that when the pressure of the electromagnetic waves coming out of the solenoid come out, it's going to kick the motor from the side and cause a spin like that. And when you get this metal bar through there as well, you're going to get a north, or you're going to get opposing poles forming on that side. So not only is the magnet constantly being pulled in opposite directions from that way, but it's getting a kick from this way as well, which is causing it to always spin in a counterclockwise direction. I hope that description made sense, because it's a really important part of how this amazing mechanism works. The only other thing you might notice in here is this small silver capsule in there. That small silver capsule is actually a container. And that's where the quartz crystal is that gives this device its name. Now I'm not going to explain how quartz crystals work, there are plenty of good guides for that. And in fact I may try and put a guide along the bottom here, or at least a link to the guide. Now as we were saying before, the seconds hand spins this, which I promised you spins the minutes hand. So let's try and see how that comes together by taking things off slowly. So you know that this gear sent its little spinner down that hole. And I don't know if you can see it too clearly, but that hole touches the gear directly underneath. So let's pop this gear off. We'll take this guy out, and as you can see, it forms a stick that goes straight through and out of here so that it can touch the second hand. So the second hand goes right through the middle, right through the center of the device. Now let's pop this guy off, along with the motor and other materials. And if you look under, you'll see that this is the minutes gear. This gear spins once per minute, and it's controlled directly by this guy that we saw underneath. And so it comes down and connects almost like that. This one, keep it in mind, because it's a bit of a special gear, and I'll explain why it's a special gear in a second. Put that there. Now, the minutes gear, as you can see, has a little gear underneath it that spins this guy, and this guy down samples that rotation to this, which is the hours hand. So the cool thing to note is that the hours hand is like that, the minutes hand forms a smaller cylindrical hole through it, like that, and then you've got the seconds that go through the middle again. And that is how you get your three concentric layers of clock hands. Now I promised you that the minutes hand was a special one, but why is that? And the reason is this. On this plate over here, you've got this little button that spins like this, right? And it spins this gear for the purpose of quickly setting your clock to whatever time you want. I mean, hopefully you've used one of these clocks before, and you know that when you spin this really quickly, it modifies the time. However, you may have also noticed that whenever you spin this, the seconds hand doesn't move. The minutes hand moves, and the hours hand move, but the second one does not. Now, if you look at it carefully, this, when it comes in, see where the gear is? Try and follow it closely. It lines up over there. So it connects right here and spins this gear. See? If it connected there, it would spin this gear. And that in turn, this gear, in turn, rotates the other two. But since we know that this connects upwards through the layers to this gear, and this in turn is connected to the seconds hand, why doesn't the seconds hand spin? It's because of this gear. Check this out. Despite the fact that this gear looks solid, this layer here is actually disconnected from the rest. Look, I'll hold the top layer steady, and I can spin the bottom layer freely. Now, there's you can't 
feel it, but there's enough friction going on here that when the clock is usually spinning in its normal operation, the friction will be too high for any slippage. And that's probably what this metal bar is for as well. But if I apply a lot of force really quickly through this, then this will slip and the seconds hand won't be translated through. And that's pretty much how this quartz clock works. So if we look at it and we were to tip out each component one by one, if we started from scratch, first we put the hours hand in, then we have to get the gear to move between the hours hand and the minutes hand. So the minutes hand goes in, and there we go, we've got a connection as you can see. Once we've done that, we've got to put the layer on that contains the motor and the little pinion gear that powers the whole thing via its tiny magnet. So we stick that on top, like so. For a bit of stability, we'll stick the seconds hand straight through the hole. We get the gear that connects the seconds hand to the minute hand, and we put it on top, and we get the gear that connects the well, pinion or motor, whatever you want to call it, to the seconds hand. And we stick that in there, like so. Once we've done that, we can then go back to putting this on top again. And there you have it. We've got our whole gear. And you can hear it spinning again. And if we rotate this, you can hear that it's still going, but we're able to move the second, we're able to move the minutes and hours hands. So just to prove to you that it is in fact the hours and minutes hand only that spin when I move that lever. Let's quickly stick these guys back on. So this is the hours hand. As you can see it goes on the outer layer of the blue one. We've got the minutes hand that goes on the outer layer of the white one. And we've got the seconds hand that connects to the little metal rod in the middle like we saw, such that, now watch this, if I spin the back plate, look at that, we get the minutes hand moving, and we get the hours hand moving, but the seconds hand is staying dead still, exactly as we expected, sorry about that, I bumped the camera, and as we can see, the clock itself is spinning the seconds hand at regular intervals. I hope you enjoyed this video. It should fully explain the fundamental workings of this rather amazing device. The bit that I'm personally most impressed with is the little motor that is controlled oh so precisely with an electromagnet. And that's it. This is Robert Massioli's video on clock mechanism internals. I hope you have enjoyed another one of my works and that I continue to show you interesting stuff about clocks in the future. With any luck, I'll have more clock videos to come.